I was a staff engineer at Unique Recording, where my brother Chris worked. I started life as a front of house engineer, and um, I did that from 16 to about 21 or 22. And Chris had been bugging me to, to come and work with him in the studio. Um, and finally, I took him up on it. Um, and I was hired by the studio as an engineer, pissed off all the assistants, because I just jumped right in. Chris threw me in the chair, and I had no reason to be there. I was scared shitless. He wanted to see what I was made of, and obviously, I, I did reasonably well. So, I'm just kind of handling the engineer duties for Chris's projects, you know, so he would be mixing in one room, I would be engineering, you know, maybe doing a vocal or a, a guitar part in, in the other room. And I get a call one Sunday morning, and, and it's Chris. And he says, bro, he says, you gotta go in, you gotta do a session for me. Okay. I go, why? He goes, because I got arrested. You know, unfortunately the Lord Algies are notorious for getting speeding tickets. Um, and those were the days that he probably had a suspended license from a, from a speeding ticket. So he had gotten nicked for speeding um, and they were kind of holding him. You know, I mean, I think he got out in a couple of hours, but it was on his way to the studio and, and he was working with a band called OMD, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. So he said, look, these guys flew in just for this mix from London and we've got to do the mix today and I don't think I'm going to make it. Go there and tell them that you're me. So I went there. You know, said that I was Chris, did the mix. They loved it. At the end of the session, you know, when, when everything, when they signed off and everything, and we were just kind of, you know, having a good laugh and, and they were thanking me, I said, all right, now I have to be honest with you. You know, I said, I'm, I'm not Chris Lord Algy, I'm his brother Tom. I said, we don't care who you are. You know, we love the mix. That led to uh, a couple of months later, they asked me if I would produce an engineer and mix a song for them for a movie soundtrack. Um, in Los Angeles. So I went out to Los Angeles. I, I produced, recorded, and mixed a song. It was called If You Leave by OMD. It was on a soundtrack called Pretty in Pink. And I think it was one of their biggest hits, um, at least in the United States. It's a song that's still heard to this day. During the time I was in Los Angeles, my brother Chris started the first couple of days on Steve Winwood back in the high life because he knew I was out there doing it. So he actually covered me for Back in the High Life, and then when I came back, I jumped into Back in the High Life, the Steve Winwood album. Um, again, that was a gig, that was a Chris gig that he gave to me because he didn't want to do it because he was focusing his energy on mixing. He knew it was going to be a long project of recording, and he just wanted to mix it. So I came back, took over for Chris, did eight months in that album. They loved what I was doing, ended up having me mixing it. And I won my first Grammy for Best Engineered Recording for that album. And I thought, oh, well, I got this shit down. <laughs> Two years later, I produced and mixed an engineer to mix Steve Winwood's next album called Roll With It. I won another Best Engineered Recording Grammy. By this point, my brother Chris was fucking pissed. Um, he was fucking pissed, <laughs> you know. But I was very thankful that, that he had had the faith in me to hand me those projects and that I didn't let him down. So, I mean, I know that when I won, you know, how proud he was of me. And um, when he won his first Grammy, I remember, you know, how I felt and how proud I was of him because I was like, finally, it's about time um, that, that he did it. But, you know, those, the, the, the OMD was really my first big hit, you know, and then obviously Steve Wood, Winwood back in the high life was a huge record um, at that time um, and, a, and a very unique recording. It was at that time, one of the one of the earlier records that incorporated kind of machine rhythms with live drums, and, and we were doing all kinds of of, of stuff in, in that way. Um, it was it was cool, you know. And then moving down down the, the you know moving through the scale of my career, um, you know, I, I always considered myself I was the adult contemporary king because um, I did a lot of adult contemporary, you know, Stevie Winwood, Rick Astley, um, Peter Cetera. You know, it goes on and on and on with kind of the adult contemporary stuff, which I always thought I did really well because I, I added some edge to it. And then in the 90s, um, I mixed a band called Live, um, a, kind of e, a kind of alternative rock band. Um, and they made a co a, an album called Throwing Copper that I mixed in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. 
um, that of course none of us knew at the time was going to be as huge as it was. Um, but it turned out to be, you know, to sell eight or 10 million albums. Um, it, it was a very well received album amongst other musicians. I got 15 years of work from that album, from that one album, um, Live Throwing Copper. From that, I'm certain I got Weezer, you know, which I did the Green album and Maladroit, you know, and more recently, um, the Weezer Back to the Shack album. Um, but yeah, so then I kind of got into the alternative rock and, you know, and really hit some of that stuff out of the park and, and, and was able to be really successful in the 90s and into the 2000s with that. Um, and now I'm continuing with that type of stuff. I have loyal bands and loyal clients that really enjoy the work, my work. And I found a market that I think for me is really exciting and that's Japanese music. Um, I'm doing a lot of Japanese rock bands and the music scene in Japan is freaking amazing. So I'm working with bands, Hello Sleepwalker, One OK Rock, uh, The Rad Wimps, um, these amazing bands that are making these unbelievably great rock records. And uh, I was recently over in, uh, in Japan where I recorded two shows for One OK Rock and they played 60,000 people per show. It's 120,000 people in two days. You know, and I recorded it and mixed the live album, you know, in a, for DVD. And, uh, and it's amazing. Uh, but there's, you know, so I've, I've been doing a lot of Japanese stuff and uh, I look forward to doing a lot more because they're really a lot of great stuff. Baby metal. I want to do baby metal. <laughs>